don't think I can go any higher. Okay. Okay. It's just going to be like a little leg. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry for the brief delay in getting started. I uh, had a little bit of technical difficulty, but we are here now and I will get busy. Um, first, I wanna thank you for attending this virtual Q&A. Um, I would like to start by just sharing that from the virtual parent sessions last Tuesday and the feedback from what went out last Friday, we have collected nearly 500 questions from our staff and our families. We first went through and categorized the questions based on key topics and came up with the following. Um, the questions all uh, uh, surrounded calendar, classes, how we're changing the color-coded risk level, learning, mod learning models, activities, safety, childcare, cohort groups, special education, devices and internet, lockers, backpacks, and supplies, finances, and then several staff specific questions. And of course, a miscellaneous category that has everything from transportation and food service to masks and screeners and everything in between. So after uh, going through these questions and trying to categorize them, we went to align with the time at which we'd have available for, night, for tonight's session. And we categorized these questions into four categories. First, staff specific questions. There were several questions for staff that will need to be answered in a different format than tonight's event. Tonight, we're going to look at doing specific questions for families and looking to do a staff specific event at another time. Next, we looked at questions that are answered in our return to learn plan. We will be adding a list of those questions along with their page reference to our website in the next couple of days. And then finally, we looked at what questions are we currently engaged in figuring out? We'll be adding a list of those questions to our site, and then you will know what's being worked on. And I would like to share some of those questions with you so that you are aware of the next steps in our team's planning. So when will kindergarten assessments occur? That is in progress. Um, I don't have that answer tonight, but will soon. Will schools be open earlier in the morning to allow for parents to drop off their children on their way to work? What about hands-on classes for high school students? Will band, choir, and orchestra be offered? What will FIAD look like? What requirements are in place for changing? What about dual credit and AP courses? Will instruments have to be at home and at school? Some instruments do not travel easily. And then will the ACT and other standardized assessments be given this year? and then describe how and when assessments will be given and when they'll be expected to be returned. So those are all questions that I'm not going to address tonight, but they are not forgotten. And you will find them on our website as we develop responses and answers. In addition, there are some others. Um, the time commitment ex expectations for distance learning. How will students get to games and practices on their distance learning days? What about speech, debate, student Congress, theater? If I have an elementary age twins, can they have the same teacher to help manage assignments and office hours more easily? In the cohort model, what will the average class size be? Could families sign a waiver that allows them to be on site all five days each week? Are you sure that this cohort division will allow social distancing to be met in every classroom? If enough students choose the fully distance learning plan, can some students come back during the week? So again, those are questions that we are developing responses to, and we will have those to you as just as soon as we're able. But here's what I can answer for you right now, and I'm gonna jump right in as to not waste time. We received a lot of questions around the new calendar for this school year. So I'm going to discuss this in detail. The district's return to learn plan includes a change to our first day of school. We moved this date from August 25th to September 3rd to allow more planning time for our staff and families. Since we know planning in a hybrid model will have its complications, we felt it was best to keep the cohorts on the same schedule throughout the year. Continuity in the schedule should be helpful in terms of planning for both staff and families. 
Students in grades K through 12 with the last names that start with L through Z will start school on site on Thursday, September 3rd. Students in grades K through 12 with last names that start with A through K will start school on site on Tuesday, September 8th. Our school calendar has not adjusted in terms of the length of the school day. School start and end times will remain the same as previous years for on-site instruction. Specific time requirements for online learning and the virtual program will be shared by teachers once those schedules are finalized. Our school calendar has not adjusted in terms of the length of the year either. Our last day of school is still scheduled on Thursday, May 27. In this revised calendar, each cohort receives 67 days of on-site instruction. Some weeks, one cohort may lose a day of on-site instruction due to a holiday, but both groups do equal out at the end of the year. On the calendar included in the Return to Learn plan on page 20, you will see some days colored in blue, green, and gray. Those days are no school days. No instruction will occur for any group of students on those days. The yellow days are online learning for all. These Wednesdays allow for staff professional development, cleaning and disinfecting between cohorts, and the possibility to allow for additional time for student in interventions. As for snow days, you may still receive an early morning call indicating that on-site school has been canceled for the day due to the conditions. However, all students will still be able to access instruction that day through the online learning model. Back to school nights for this year have been canceled. The second highest submission of questions related to the color coded risk levels. So how West Fargo Public Schools will transition in and out of these phases is outlined on pages 37 through 42 of our plan. Page 38 describes the weekly process that will be undertaken to evaluate current risk levels in the district. Each week, the findings of these meetings will be shared with all stakeholders, along with any phase adjustments that may occur. We still strive to give staff and families several days notice before moving into phases so plans can be made. In this category, I'd also like to address the many inquiries about why West Fargo is not considering a full reentry like other districts in the state. When you read the guidance for the green phase, it indicates and includes a physical distancing recommendation. With the size of West Fargo Public Schools, we are unable to meet those physical distancing requirements unless we limit the number of students on site at one time. Additional questions we can answer now. Active, ac academics and activities. What about elementary specials, music, gym, art, and library? We are working on an alternative schedule for students to have specials on the days when they are on site. At this time, most will have music during off-site distance learning days for K-5. Will the two cohorts be learning the same content at the same time? Yes, that is the plan. Are secondary students rotating classrooms? Yes. Masks will be required during passing times. Smaller cohorts and not issuing lockers should also help with hallway congestion. When can students get additional in-person help from a teacher? In the hybrid model, teachers will answer emails and student contacts before and after school and during their prep time. In addition, they may have some time open on Wednesdays, but they will primarily get their help during the on-site days. Can classes be streamed every day? No, unfortunately, we do not have the technology equipment to offer that option for our courses. We also feel that managing both on-site and off-site students simultaneously would be a significant challenge. Could actual homework in different areas be assigned in lieu of trying to do distance learning music in FIED? We will continue to offer our specials 
It is highlight of the day for many of our students and is so important part of a well-rounded education. When will we know which classes are being taught by West Fargo High School staff and which are being outsourced? Once we have students signed up and have staff who will be in distance and have staff who will be distance determined so that we can fulfill student schedules. So to, re to restate that, we, we need to know um, what students have signed up and get that registration process underway and know what parents are, and families are selecting for their children. And then we can fulfill those student schedules. How will you help students that are falling behind? We are considering additional time for students who need intervention utilizing Wednesdays and other times as well. Those conversations are still happening. How will you help students that are excelling continue to do so? In K-5, our gate teachers will continue to work with students just like they would during the regular school year. If we become uncomfortable within school, can we switch to fully distance at any time? We are asking at this time that this be a semester or trimester commitment. Um, it would be very challenging uh, to manage ensuring that we would have staff to accommodate all of the different scenarios. Will online learning actually be decent this time around? Will schedules be more rigorous and concrete? The online portions of our hybrid have been have more specific parameters than they did last spring. We'll also be more readily have access to materials to share with students. During distance learning, if needed, the parameters will be tightened with more synchronous time. Can high school students review their schedules before deciding on a model? Unfortunately, no. We will need to know our virtual program students in order to build their schedules. How do I sign up for the virtual program? We will have information out by the end of this week um, as to how you will sign up. Please watch for that communication to come. Will there be live virtual classes in the virtual program? Yes, from our West Fargo, High, West Fargo Public School teachers, but some classes may be offered by outside agencies without that component. If families can choose to be fully online, why can't we choose to be fully on site? And it goes back to that managing the capacity of all the students on site with physical distancing and the contract contact tracing is our challenge. Will my student have the same teacher for their on site versus online days in the district plan? Yes with the exception of some specialist lessons potentially being shared by other specialists in art, music, FIAD, media, and some of those type of classes due to scheduling. So we're gonna do our best to make sure that happens. Is there a limit to how many times a student can move between learning models in a year? Well, moves can only be made at the semester for six through 12 and trimester for K through five. Can children from the same family choose to be in different models? The answer is yes. If we pick the fully online option, can my child still participate in activities? Yes. If students can't be on site 100% of the time, why are activities being allowed? Students on a team would be considered a cohort model, which allows for easier contact tracing in the event of a positive case. Further, physical distancing is feasible in most activities. The next group of questions are surrounding special education. Who do those with special education contact? When teachers are back on contract, case managers will reach out to parents and guardians to determine how to support special education programming. How will special education at busing work? Students with special needs that are eligible for the special education transportation will have busing on the days that they attend school. What is the special ed preschool schedule going to look like for my child? Early childhood special education programming will be communicated with parents and guardians this week. 
If my child receives special education services that don't qualify as special education or need an IEP, for example, speech therapy or the GATE program, how will this be addressed? Will they be pulled from classroom? Will it be done virtually? And the answer is that students who receive interventions through our multi-tier system of support will have access to their intervention time while making sure that the student has access to their general education time as well. If my child has an IEP, will the school staff be meeting with the parent prior to the start of the school year in order to make sure that an updated plan is in place that incorporates hybrid and distance learning? Special education case managers and service providers will follow the CLP or the contingency learning plan that was written this past spring. And they will collect and analyze data to determine instructional next steps based on the student's needs. The teachers will contact the parents or guardians within the first three weeks of school to refine the individual contingency learning plan. If a student has an IEP and they would still follow the district plan, but if they need additional help, they'll be able to go to the school classes four days a week. That being said, it would have to be added to their plan. So at this time, we are planning for students with special needs to follow their cohort plan. There will be opportunities for additional intervention opportunities on Wednesdays. I don't understand the release from my son's IEP and it will it be honored. He needs in-person instruction, and it wasn't clear if that would happen virtually or in-person on his two days, two school days. Parents and guardians will elect the learning option that best fits their child's needs. If a parent or guardian elects the hybrid option, students with special needs will follow their cohort plan. For children with an IEP, will there be an additional day? At this time, we are working on the details of all the learning options. Decisions about additional learning opportunities will focus on our, will be the focus of our planning. These opportunities will depend on staffing, transportation, and space to allow for physical distancing. Are there different plans for kiddos in special education or with an IEP plan? Distance learning for these students needs to be more live interaction with their teacher versus just a 30 minute, how are you doing meeting. Since the classroom size is smaller, can these be full time on site? Parents and guardians will elect the learning option that best fits their child's needs. If a parent or guardian elects the hybrid option, students with special needs follow their cohort plan. If a parent or guardian elects the distance learning option, Students will ac access their general education and special education through a distance learning model. Will the district be providing childcare for the hybrid model off days? The answer is we are currently having very productive conversations with community partners to identify possible solutions. More information to come. What are the impacts of the hybrid model on before and after school through the YMCA? Those programs will still be provided for students on the days that they are on site for instruction. And then questions regarding the cohorts. Can we switch cohorts? We will take requests and we'll honor them based on the cohort size and the court course availability. Please watch for the official process to be shared this week. What if my child has what if my children have last names that put them in separate cohorts? Part of the official process that I just mentioned will sort this out as well. That process of selecting uh, the choice for your, your child. And then my child has two last names. How do I find out which cohort they have been assigned to? Part of the official process that I just mentioned will also sort out that question as well. So as a reminder, Every F and Q, whether answered tonight in this session or answered in the future, will be added to the Return to Learn website page. That web page also contains the feedback 
where we will ask to you to submit any additional questions that you have and as plans develop. So one thing I just wanna close with saying is, um, we just released this plan on Friday. It's very comprehensive and today and into the week, we are working with our teams, our teacher teams and our leaders to answer many of these questions because some of these questions have to come from the building level and they're more individualized. But just letting our families know that is our intent that we want children back in school. We want things to be back to normal. We will bring children back just as soon as we are able to feel safe and confident that, um, that we are going to um, be safe. And I really just want families to know that we're gonna be analyzing this every week. This is every week, our conversation. So, um, keep those questions coming. I'm sorry I couldn't give you answers to everything, but we will keep bringing you what we know and don't know and do our best to, to provide you a sense of, of calm during this difficult time and um, to give you the answers that you're seeking. Thank you so much for joining us.